Minh xin kính chào quý vị đến với chương trình Sức khỏe và đời sống. Kính thưa quý vị, hôm nay chúng tôi mời ông Michael Delaney đến từ Claremont Villa Adult Day Care Center để nói về cái trung tâm chăm sóc người lớn tuổi. Uh, Michael, hello, how are you? I'm doing fine and thank you for asking. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming here and discuss about um, Claremont Villa Adult Day Care Center. Would you please Um, explain to the audience or inform them what is this um, Claremont Villa Adult Day Care Center. I'm Michael and I'm a social worker at Claremont Villa Adult Day Healthcare Center, which is a program, it's called a community-based adult service. It's a program that allows for seniors and disabled adults uh, to come to our center few hours a day where they can receive nutritious meals and they can receive a socialization and a variety of other services uh, that helps meet their medical and social needs. And the whole idea behind the uh, community-based adult services is to delay or prevent people from uh, being hospitalized. Wow, that's pretty good because right now it is hospitalization Uh, especially in the adult uh, population is a lot and we want to save costs and all that. Now, uh, I think you mentioned these adults have to be eligible to, to, to um, be in this program? Yes, there are eligibility requirements. Okay. Um, the person needs to uh, have help or assistance in, in two areas that involve med chronic medical conditions. It could be hypertension, high blood pressure, Uh, it could be diabetes, um, it could be the results of a, a stroke, a CVA, mm. so they would need to have help in uh, two medical conditions. Basically the conditions that need to have like some kind of monitoring, some assistance from uh, healthcare professionals, yeah? Yeah, they would definitely have to be monitored by um, skilled uh, healthcare professionals. Okay. And we provide all of the skilled services at our center. Let's emphasize a little bit more on the services you provide. Um, again, what kind of services and also who will be providing these services? The, the center is, is overseen by a medical director. Okay. We also have an administrator uh, full-time on staff, a program director. And then the services that we provide are physical therapy, occupational therapy, services by uh, registered nurses, medical social workers, we have a psychologist, a certified activities director, um, and who am I leaving out? Uh, uh, pharmacist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pharmacist, so that's <laughs> a registered dietitian. <laughs> uh, we don't have a pharmacist on staff, but yeah, one yeah. of our family members is uh, a pharmacist. Okay, good, good. Uh, now, um, let's go back to the paperwork process. You know, you mentioned eligibility. Now, do they have assistance in getting the paperwork done? And uh, normally, how long does it take? We will uh, do all of the necessary paperwork. Okay. Um, the time that it takes from start to finish varies. It could be two weeks. It could be up to a month, sometimes longer. Uh, the paperwork process starts with the person coming in, signing uh, releases of information, mm -hmm. which gives us permission to then uh, talk to their doctor okay. or any other uh, healthcare uh, agencies, like maybe hospitals. Uh -huh. um, the doc uh, each participant that's enrolling has mm -hmm. to have a primary care physician, okay. and we will send a health assessment to their primary care physician. Okay. Sometimes that gets returned quickly, other times it kind of drags on. Depends on the situation. It depends on the situation, depends on the, uh, the physician. Okay. Once we receive that paperwork back from the physician, uh -huh. we then forward it on to the enrollee's insurance company, and we can get into that a little bit uh, as well. Okay, yeah, so is there cost involved? Uh, you mentioned insurance, I think. So, um, if What type of insurance do you accept, Medicare or Medicaid, or can they pay cash? We do not accept Medicare, uh, but we can bill Medicaid. We can bill Medi-Cal as long as the participant has an HMO attached to their Medi-Cal. Okay, okay. And we're contracted with uh, six HMOs. HMO. Okay. And as, if the person has Medi-Cal with an HMO, there is no cost. Okay. However, if a person wants to pay privately, if they want to pay out of pocket, it would be $80 per day. 
Wow, that's pretty affordable, especially with all the services you provide. Right. Yeah, and meals too. I think that's the important part. <laughs> we do provide meals. We provide breakfast and lunch. Okay. We also provide transportation to and from the center. Oh, okay, transportation um, too. And if the person is maybe wheelchair bound and cannot get in or out of our vans and our buses, we will arrange for MTS to uh, come and pick them up. Okay. And we will pay the cost for the, the round trip for MTS. Wow, well, all of that's covered. Yeah. Wow. Now, um, important question, uh, do you have bilingual languages? What kind of languages do you provide there besides English? We have a variety. <laughs> We're very multicultural, very multilingual. Okay. Um, our participants are Vietnamese, Russian, Filipino, uh -huh. Hispanic. Uh, who am I leaving out? Let me look at my notes. Pretty much everybody. Um, we have a staff person that can speak each language of any participant that we have. It, it could be Vietnamese or Cambodian, Mandarin, Cantonese, Russian, Tagalog, Spanish, and English. Wow. So we have a staff person that can speak uh, any of those languages. Wow, so pretty much everyone's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> now, it seems like your population is very diverse. Um, how do you provide food that would fit all those individuals? That's a, that's a difficult part. That's a tricky part. <laughs> um, because food, obviously, it's, it's a necessity of life, not only for the, the nutritional oh, yeah. factor, mm -hmm. but also for the social factor of, of gathering around a meal at a table and enjoying it together. And with all the cultures that we have, mm -hmm. it can be a little bit difficult to prepare tasty foods that's going to uh, meet each cultural taste. And also the medical conditions too. Right? And also the medical conditions, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the meals can be prepared for uh, diabetic, renal, or cardiac diets. All of our meals are prepared uh, with low sodium, low fat content. Wow. And they're all overseen monthly by a registered dietitian. Wow. And prepared by an uh, in-house chef. Okay. Um, I think, I'm not sure, do you have uh, like um, on-site physicians or PAs or any like those individuals that could assist in case you need? We do not have on-site mm -hmm. physicians or PAs. However, everyone that enrolls has to have their own primary care physician. Yeah, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, we do have registered nurses in case a, a, an emergency comes up. The registered nurses will contact the, the uh, primary care physicians mm -hmm. and then follow their instructions in case of an emergency. Okay. But uh, we do not have on-site um, physicians. Yeah. Now, um, what can you tell us a little bit about the activities that they do at the center? Like, what are the fun activities or, you know, their daily activities, I guess? I think that's probably the second biggest reason why they come to our center, the food being number one. <laughs> <laughs> activities being number two, okay. um, and I will read from, from a list of the activities that we have. Um, we have a, a Vietnamese volunteer group that comes in and they do sing-alongs and musical oh, entertainment, wow. so that, that's a, a big one. That sounds um, fun. There are a variety of outings. Um, the outings can include trips to Zion Market, uh, trips to the 99 cent store, which is a big one. Uh -huh. They also include trips to Miramar Lake or Balboa Park to the museums. Wow. So uh, once or twice a month, we try and get um, a number of the participants out and into the community. Yeah, there's a lot around San Diego that you can do with these individuals. Now, do you take them all at once or do you divide into groups or how does that work? It's um, kind of on a first come first serve basis mm -hmm. in terms of small groups mm -hmm. because we have to have enough staff to go with okay. the number of people. So okay. if, if, for example, 15 of the participants are going to go on an outing, then we have to have uh, at least three or four staff members to, go with them. Mm, to kind uh, of monitor. To monitor and okay. assist. That's good. Um, some of the other activities that we do provide uh, is a daily exercise program. Everyone oh. is encouraged to exercise as a group for about 20 to 30 minutes. It's uh, low impact, um, stretching, range of motion type, type mm -hmm. exercise. Okay. Um, we provide Tai Chi, we have discussion groups, uh, gardening, 
um, monthly birthday celebrations, oh, and that's another that's important. fun one. That's important. Yeah, everyone is acknowledged. <laughs> Everyone's on, 18 <laughs> again. <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is acknowledged on the day of their birthday. Okay. But then at the end of the month, we have a, a, a small celebration okay. for everyone. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um, and then there's other games like bingo, board games, arts and crafts, and we try and gear it to a variety of cognitive levels. Um, that makes some sense. people may suffer from dementia or cognitive loss or, or have memory issues. So the activities uh, program is geared to uh, the cognitive level of that participant. It's individualized, so, so it depends on their condition. Yes. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. Keep you, you very busy, I guess. How big is the size, by the way? How big is the facility? Um, like how many can you accommodate? Currently, we can accommodate up to 75 people per day, but that is going to increase, and uh, that should happen pretty quickly to where we can accommodate 200. Oh, wow. Wow, sounds fun. Um, what's your hour of uh, operation, like in the morning and to? We are open Monday through Friday. Um, the program hours are from 8 till 3 o'clock. Okay. Office hours are from 8 till 4.30. Okay. So um, when uh, do they have to commit certain time in the day or certain days in the week? And you know when they schedule or you know they can come anytime how does that work when they initially enroll we will ask them uh, first of all we have to determine how many days they're eligible for and that it's done through the insurance company I see. and then we ask the person how many days they want to attend and which days of the week they want to attend and as an example if they want to come three days a week and they choose Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, mm. we ask them to commit to those days Makes sense. so that we can uh, uh, schedule food. everything. Yeah, I have enough food prepared. <laughs> if not, they just show up, no food. <laughs> can you send them out to McDonald's? <laughs> now, um, can the family member uh, come and visit them uh, or tour the facility prior to enrolling their family members into the program? We encourage uh, the families to come and visit for a tour. Okay. That way they can uh, see the facility. Have uh, a feeling. Have how a feel for the environment. Mm -hmm. Get more information on the services we offer. And we also encourage them to bring along um, the participant, their family member. Okay. Um, and if it's something that they like and they're interested in, we offer what's called a free visit day. No cost. They can so come and the, actually the, spend the day with oh, us. Oh, okay, so uh, that's no cost for them. No cost for that oh, at wow. all. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and this is all pre-enrollment. Okay. That way they can sample the food, they can meet the staff, they can meet the other participants um, and get a, a better feel for. Uh, can I just come and sample the food for myself? <laughs> <laughs> so basically they can, they can uh, kind of tour the facility and um, uh, have a feel for it. And then when their family member is having activity, can they come and visit? Yeah, we've had uh, family members just kind of drop in to, to see how their loved one was doing. Um, kind of check in on their family members. Yeah, to check in on them. Some mm -hmm. family members will come in um, and pick them up to take them home. Uh, they may have doctor's appointments or other appointments, mm -hmm. and the family will come in early and kind of stay with the participant and then take them uh, back home or to their uh, other appointment. We don't really encourage the families to come um, once the person is enrolled, however, they're more than welcome to. Mm. And probably just like visit a couple hours, like visit hour, not the whole entire time that they're going to be there with the... Right. The, uh, and speaking of the entire time, we ask that uh, the participants stay for a minimum of four hours when they do come on a day. Mm. So as yeah. an example, if they, if they come in and arrive at 8.30, we ask that they stay at least till 12.30. Um, which is about the end of lunch time, so that would that would cover their four hours stay. Yeah, it makes sense because they need to kind of get used to the environment if they're going to be there for a long time, and also allow your staff to get to know the person, right? Yes. Because you mentioned individual kind of care, mm -hmm. so it only makes sense they can just cannot just come and then go. You know, it's it's, it's you want to build that relationship, correct? We would definitely build good relationships with mm -hmm. with our our participants and their families. Our staff is very caring and they get to know the family yeah. almost as well as they know the participants. Yeah, because I do work in the hospital. I do know some, know some nurses. Um, they get to know the, 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 their the patients well and they provide better care that way. You know, like, you know, they kind of know this patient like this 
certain way or like that certain way. Exactly, yeah. more individualized mm -hmm. care. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you would like to tell the audience about your program that we haven't covered here? Um, I want to kind of backtrack a little bit to the eligibility part and I had mentioned um, two chronic uh, conditions, but also if the person needs assistance um, with what's called activities of daily living, um, the person may be at home and they need help with bathing or mm. transferring, say, from the couch to the wheelchair. Uh, they may need assistance with toileting, um, any of the uh, activities of daily living. If, if they need assistance with that, that can also help qualify them and make them eligible for the program. Wow, that would help the family member tremendously. We, we do provide um, respite care for the families because if um, the family member is taking care of their loved one uh, all of the time, I mean, they can send them to us and that gives them the family member a break during the day for several definitely, hours. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Especially, I think the most important part, uh, most important thing about this program that you provide is that uh, not only the indi individualized care that you mentioned, but the interaction with uh, you know the other participants. I think that's like like you said in, in the name, a community base, mm -hmm. um, providing uh, in a way environment, the interaction that they can get with other people, not only with the healthcare professionals, with other people. I think it helps the adults a lot, the seniors. A lot. Socialization is Socialization very, day, very yeah. important. Mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. We have some of our, our uh, participants that live alone oh. and they may not get too many visits from family or friends or neighbors so they come to our center and we become their family and mm. they meet new friends and begin to socialize and that can help keep the uh, depression keep the blues the away stress, and, you know, and yeah. definitely reduce stress when they come to socialize. Exactly. We have a lot of immigrants who are adjusting to being in this country um, so they get to come and be around other people of their culture that speak their language yeah. and that socialization is huge. Yeah I think that's that's to me it's a very important part mm -hmm. if I have a family member that like to enroll in your program. Um, let me uh, briefly uh, summarize what we just talked about to the audience. Kính thưa quý vị, vừa rồi là ông Michael Dulaney đã chia sẻ những cái uh, uh, activity ở uh, trung tâm chăm sóc người lớn tuổi Claremont Villa Adult Day Care Center. Uh, thì uh, quý vị nào có những người lớn tuổi muốn gửi đến trung tâm này thì liên lạc đến uh, cái trung tâm. Uh, do you have a website that uh, you, um, that the audience can find more information about? Yes, so they could go to uh, ClaremontVilla.com. Uh -huh or they can go to cvadhc.com. Okay, okay, and the phone number, I think you provide a phone number here, right? Yeah, and the phone number is 858-576-8575. Um, À, và kính thưa quý vị, à, giống như ông đã nói thì nếu quý vị muốn biết thêm chi tiết về những chương trình này và chương, cái chỗ này đã có những người à, có thể nói tiếng Việt để có thể giúp quý vị thì à, à, cái, cái, cái website là quý vị có thể coi trên màn ảnh và cái số điện thoại là 858 576 8575 uh, Again, Michael, thank you so much for coming here to share with us about your um, adult daycare center. Um, uh, we would like to you know, say something goodbye to the audience. It's been my pleasure. Thank okay. you for inviting me in to, to share a little bit about what we do. Okay. And please come and visit. À, kính thưa quý vị đó đã, đã kết thúc chương trình sức khỏe và đời sống à, của chúng ta kính chào quý vị hẹn quý vị lần sau. <cười>